until now, we've been talking about uh, describing the motion without knowing anything about the cause. Sort of a gray area is talking about free fall, where we sort of like implicitly included the force of gravity in there. Um, but we didn't talk about it yet as a force. Um, but so now we're going to go on to the next topic where we do talk about the causes. So we're going on to 2D kinetics. And kinetics combines um, kinematics with causes of motion and that's going to require us to talk about two new quantities Um, and those are mass and force. Um, and so I'm going to start by defining mass. Uh, that's going to be the simpler one to define. That'll be fast. And then for a long time after that, we're just going to talk about defining different types of forces. Um, so the first one, the easy one is mass. Um, and what mass is, uh, is a measure of an object's resistance to acceleration. How hard is it to accelerate an object? Um, So, for example, um, if this football player Uh, collides with this football player. Um. They collide. This guy is going to experience a big acceleration. This guy is going to experience a very small acceleration. We won't even know that this has happened. You know, uh, that's why um, in the positions where all you're trying to do, like on the offensive line, all you're trying to do is accelerate people backwards. That's your only job. You never see in the NFL people who look like that. Um, so, when these two players collide, um, 
the big guy won't accelerate much. Um, and that's because he has a lot of mass. And therefore, he's resistant, more resistant to acceleration. Uh, the little guy will accelerate a lot. Um, because he has a lot less mass. Um, so you think of mass and weight as being sort of synonyms of each other. Uh, your, um, like a bathroom scale has, uh, Usually you can switch on the bottom from pounds to kilograms, whatever you want to measure in. Well, pounds is actually a measure of force. That's a measure of how hard gravity is pulling on you. That's, that's a force. Um, kilograms is a measure of mass. And um, that's not really a measure of how hard gravity is pulling on you. Um, they do relate to each other, and we'll talk about that. but. Um, the scale isn't really directly measuring your mass. A scale is just measuring how hard your foot, how much force your foot is pushing into the scale. And scales like that, so that works fine, you know, with a scale, with a, a conversion factor, you can use a bathroom scale to measure how much mass you have as long as you know what the acceleration of gravity is. But like for astronauts uh, who are in orbit, you can't use a bathroom scale because there's no apparent gravity. You know, like if you're in a place with no gravity, you know, people are just floating around in this, in this ship, whatever. Um, they don't put any force on a scale. Like they'd have to hold themselves down onto the scale to stand on it. So like the idea of measuring mass with a bathroom scale, it, it's meaningless. It, there's no way to do it. And so uh, but it, it's actually, for astronauts, it's really important to be able to accurately measure their mass because uh, it's really easy to lose a lot of bone density, and that's really dangerous. And so they're really careful every day about uh, measuring their mass, making sure they're not losing too much weight. The way they do it is they have a contraption that I've never seen, but I imagine it's like we like in the old J.C. Penney catalogs in the exercise section, there used to be these things that would like jiggle you. Anyone remember those things? Or like in old cartoons? But it, it like jiggles their body. It applies known forces to them and measures how hard it is to accelerate them. And based on how easy or hard it is to accelerate, they get a measure of the mass. Because what mass is, is a measure of how hard or easy it is to accelerate. Um, the SI units for mass are kilograms. And one thing to notice about mass is um, mass is a positive number. Um, and so that means it's not directional. Uh, so we're not going to be treating mass as a vector. Uh, 
a single thing is just associated with a single positive number. Um, and what that means too, this is gonna be important, is uh, if you multiply a vector quantity, any vector quantity to the mass, in our case, the one that's gonna be important is the vector acceleration. So if you multiply an object's mass to a vector, and we'll talk about why you would wanna do that, um, what does that do to the vector's direction? So say that we wanna calculate uh, the quantity mass times acceleration vector, and we know the acceleration vector is exactly in this direction. When you multiply the mass to that, what direction is the vector that you get? Same direction. Multiplying a vector by a positive number doesn't change the direction. Okay, so that's going to be um, uh, that's going to be important. If you multiply a vector by the mass. Uh, the direction is unchanged. And now the one that's going to be more complicated to talk about, the second new quantity we have to define is force. Um, and force is a vector. So this is a different thing. Force does have direction. Um, that measures the intensity and the direction of pushing or pulling and let's say on an object Um, the units of force are going to be units of mass times length divided by time squared. That's a crazy combination of units. Um, that means that in SI units, the units of force are kilogram meter per second squared. But since force is something we're gonna talk about all the time, we're gonna rename this combination of units as a Newton. And we'll abbreviate it capital N. So one kilogram meter per second squared is a is one newton. Um, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then we'll do the quiz. In this class, um, there are only two ways a force can arise. Two ways a force occurs. The first one is the weight. That's the force applied to an object by gravity.
And the only other way a force can occur is an object is in contact with another object. So contact with another object. 